Good evening everyone and welcome to this catch-up video of Gundam News. Due to a combination of not having time, the second Gundam Seed Freedom trailer dropping, and well, a lot of other news, I wasn't able to make a Gundam News video last week, but starting this week everything will be back on schedule. And before long you might even see some video formats that I haven't done in a while return as well. So from now on it is full speed ahead again. Uh, so then, uh, despite being essentially two weeks worth of news, uh, you might notice that this video isn't like particularly longer than some of my other long news videos and that is because Japan had a major holiday week for Japanese standards. Um, so this week in particular there weren't too many new announcements. Fortunately it was quality over quantity. From the Gunpla News we got the announcement that the high grade Gundam Maxter alongside a huge amount of accessories and gimmicks will be joining the G Gundam lineup. Um, there are three sets of hands, two gigantic magnums, hoverboard, the ability to change between standard mode and boxing mode, and even punching effect parts and armor ditching effect parts that can be hooked up, well that have to be hooked up, to the included action base. Then again, for 2,915 yen, around 20 US, you would hope that it comes with a lot of stuff to make up for that price. And of course, it is Premium Bandai Limited. The next three headlines then were more surprising. Some of you might have seen that Legendary Comics have made a Kickstarter for a graphic novel sequel to Gundam Breaker Badlock. And I'm sure that some of you have also like dismissed this as fake or maybe not legit because, I mean... Let's be honest, Kickstarter has somewhat of a shaky reputation with fake stuff happening all the time, but the creator of this Kickstarter is the same legendary that is working on the live action Gundam movie, meaning that they do have a connection to Gundam. So even though there has been no official statement from Bandai or Gundam or whatever, everything is pointing to this project being legit. I don't think Legendary is gonna be making a bootleg Gundam comic or manga or graphic novel, however you want to call it, when they're working on a Gundam live-action movie. So at the moment um, this is everything that we know. Um, the image for the Kickstarter is a placeholder image from the anime and the project is listed as coming soon. So in case you want to be first to be notified when it actually goes live, I will have the link down below. Personally, I think there's going to be a good chance of me backing the thing. Uh, the next surprise then came from UC Engage, the mobile game that is mostly making rounds for its amazing animated cutscenes that recently have been perfectly um, emulating the style of the old anime, in particular the movie compilations. And now, after being out for almost two years, we are getting an official English version. On the 8th, pre-registrations open up, which I will have linked down below, and if they reach 100,000 users, um, you will get an ultra-rare Gundam and 3,000 gems. I would pre-register too, but, you know, Belgium. So it's a good thing that I have NordVPN to help me pretend that I'm American. And if you also need some pesky region logs dodged, um, you can use the link down below or the code KKRT to not just get one of the fastest VPNs around, but to also support the channel. And the final surprise was a doujin of all things. The Sule Mio drama no longer needs any introduction, but as a quick reminder, Japanese Bandai Namco decided to censor a reference to Sleda and Mirine being married, and instead released a statement that it is up for interpretation. So, in all of their interpretive glory, part of the staff, like the actual staff that worked on the Witch from Mercury anime, 
went to Comiket to sell a witch from Mercury Dogen in which they make it quite clear what their interpretation is. Um, unfortunately for me, I did not realize this at the time, um, so I went with the Sulemir Dogen next door. And I was also able to score Yamada Ichizoku's books, so cheers. Oh, and don't forget that according to American Bandai Namco, they are still married. To wrap up the Gunpla news then, it was previously announced that a standard version of the figurized Soleta Mercury would be releasing, and on the 7th we got all of the details for the thing. 4,180 4, yen, 29 US, gets you a green Soleta that is mostly the same as the holder version, but now also comes with extra facial expressions that can of course also be used with the holder version, and a bonus tomato. Nice. The Haru is still included, and ironically enough, despite being the standard version, it is Premium Bandai Limited. Because of course. On the figure front then, Volume 6 of Mobility Joint Gundam was announced, and man is it a powerful lineup. Uh, for 715 yen a pop, there is the standard Strike Gundam, Strike Rouge, Caliborn, G3 Gundam, and then a weapon set for each. A set containing the Ale and Sword Striker packs, one with the IWSP and Launcher Striker packs, a set for the Caliborn, and of course a set including twin Hyper Bazookas for the G3. Also, by combining the sets for the Standard Strike and the Strike Rouge, you can make the perfect strike. Pre-orders are up as we speak, and they're also available as a 10-pack for 7,150 yen, 49 US, linked down below. And these highly articulated, super deformed Gundams will be flying your way in January. And if you're a fan of SD Gundams, then the sixth volume of a Mobile Suit Ensemble is getting a restock in December, also linked down below. 10 sets go for 3,950 yen, 27 US, and included are the V2 Assault Buster Gundam, Star Jagan, Gun Cannon, Gun Tank, and an option set with a little bit for every machine. Continuing with the Witch from Mercury news then, on the 6th, the Witch from Mercury festival was held, and a few days later it was announced that a pop-up store will be opening up in Akihabara in November. The store will be, will be selling various items with new artwork on them, and more information will be coming soon. And there will be even more festivities to look forward to in November. From the 17th to the 19th, Tamashi, Nations 2023, uh, Tamashi Nation 2023 will be held, where they will of course be announcing a lot of new figures, as well as selling some limited edition items. And for Gundam, this means the Metal Build Freedom Gundam Concept 2 Snow Sparkle version for 30,800 yen, 200, 211 US, and the Robot Spirits Aerial Permit Score 6 version anime for 11,000 yen, 75 US. And on the 19th then, the Gundam Seed Festival Connect Beyond That Time will be held at the Bunkyo Civic Hall. Um, they said that they will be mostly looking back to Gundam Seed and Gundam Seed Destiny, but, I mean, considering what it's about, I wouldn't be surprised if we also see some talk about the upcoming Gundam Seed Freedom movie. On the gaming front then, in Gundam Battle Operation 2 for PlayStation, the Psycho Doga and Hyaku Shikikai ground type have joined the fun, while on the Steam version things are getting slowly better. Um, Line Gundam Wars got a commercial for their 7th anniversary campaign featuring Kana Ichinose and Lin, which I will have linked down below, although it is region locked, and from Arsenal Base for its 1.5th anniversary, pre-orders went live for a special 9 pocket binder. For 5,500 yen, 38 US, you're getting the binder itself, featuring the aerial on one side and the star build strike on the other side, two promotional cards being the aerial and uh, Sei, Iori and Reiji, 14 nine pocket pages, 45 labeling cards and four checklist pages. And then finally, somewhat gaming related are these two Capsule Mugen Gachapon Gundam Gaiden toys. 
basically they're pedometers um, and once you've taken enough steps you can crank the gachapon handle on the back like an actual gachapon machine to gacha an SD Gundam allowing you to experience the joy of gachapon anywhere anytime anyhow as long as you're walking enough um, and thanks to the LCD screen, you can look at the Gundams that you've collected so far, but as far as I can tell, there is no actual game inside of the thing. It is just a collection of Gundams that you've collected thanks to taking enough steps. The capsules come in two versions, being Sieg Zeon or Knight of the Round Table, and both go for 4,950 yen each, which is around 37 US. And in other news, Bandai opened up a new Gachapon store at the Plant 3 shopping center in Fukui's Shimizu. From Advance of Zeta, we got more information on the Hyzak fly type, and this week's featured mobile suit girl is the Grublo girl. And she continues the trend of amphibious machines not being their own thing in this universe, but rather being optional parts for other mobile suits. Uh, the main compartment is this weird yet also elegant looking fish-like thing in which a Zaku one girl is housed. And this thing is then hooked up to the Grublo, which comes with mostly the same weapons. Two claw arms, a bunch of torpedo launchers and a bunch of SAM launchers but it now also comes with a launcher for a DOP-esque scout drone, which is a really interesting and cool looking thing. As for the things you could get these past two weeks then, um, during the second week of August, the Capsule Action Zaku 2 Premium Gacha became available in Gachapon machines across Japan, and what makes this thing premium is of course the price. 1,500 yen, 12 US, which is around three to five times more expensive than standard gachapons. But for that price, you are also getting a significantly more impressive price. A fully articulated nine centimeter or three and a half inch tall Zaku 2 that also comes with a Zaku machine gun. And the available colors are standard green or mechanical clear. Meanwhile, on the 7th, a box of corn-flavored snacks of the life-sized Unicorn Gundam statue became available, well, became winnable at Namco Arcades across Japan. Around the 10th, then, we got the heavily anticipated Full Mechanics Forbidden Gundam for 6,380 yen, 44 US. This badass machine now looks even more badass. The scythe is nice and sharp, and the Geschmeidig Panzer has never looked so good before. And then finally, on the 11th, the Robot Spirits MSN 04 FF Sazabi double fin funnel type became available at Gundam Side F for a grand total of 13,200 yen or 91 US. Lobster is pretty expensive after all. For this week's reading material then, there was the 17th issue of Big Comic Superior in which Gundam Thunderbolt is being serialized and it now also comes with a holographic B2 poster of the manga's, well, of the cover of the manga's 22nd volume. Then we got the September issue of New Type in which the cast of Witch from Mercury gives their definitely, totally, 100% uncensored and unedited thoughts on the ending of Witch from Mercury. The September issue of Animage has an interview with the voice actresses of Soleta, Mirine and Prospera. And in Animedia, Soleta and Mirine are wished a blessed future. A blessed future that is, of course, totally up for your interpretation. Um, but what isn't up to your interpretation is the large amount of Gunnam apparel that we got. Starting with Strigji on the 7th, we got these very interesting cartoon-esque renditions of Mirine and Soleta on a variety of items. I honestly don't care too much about Soleta's design, but I really like what they did with uh, Mirine. 
You can get him on a t-shirt for 4,730 yen each, 32 US, a mini towel for 990 yen each, 7 US, a rubber keychain for another 990 yen, 7 US, a tote bag for 2,750 yen, 19 US, or a pouch for 3,300 yen, 23 US. And all of these items are slated for a mid-September release. Then on the 9th, they released their Gundam Seed 2023 Midsummer Collection. For 4,730 yen, 32 US, you can get a white t-shirt with the Freedom Gundam, a white t-shirt with the Justice Gundam, a white t-shirt with Kira, a white t-shirt with Atheron, or a black t-shirt with the original five Gundams written on it. Uh, for 9,680 and 66 US, you can get a navy work shirt with the Omni logo or a black one with the Zaft logo. And then for 4,400 yen or 30 US, you can get a navy cap with the Omni logo or a black one with the Zaft logo. And on the same day, they also announced their Strict G Arms 2023 Midsummer Collection. On the 11th, 6,380 yen or 44 US got you a t-shirt with reflective print of either the Federation or Xeon slash Shar Asnable. And 6,930 yen or 48 US got you a Henley short sleeved shirt with reflective print of either the Federation or Xeon. Or then on the 18th, 7,480 yen or 51 US got you a long sleeve sweater with again reflective print of either the Federation or Xeon. And for 11,880 yen 81 US, you can get a zip up hoodie. Well, you could get a zip up hoodie featuring again the Federation or Xeon slash Char. And for those in Taipei, from the 19th to the 27th, Strict G has opened up a pop-up store in the um, Huashan 1914 Creative Park. For Bunkode then, we go back to the 7th, which is when some fancy zombie-inspired leather items went up for pre-order. There's a long wallet for 22,000 yen, 151 US, a bifold wallet for 19,800 yen, 136 US, and a business card holder or pass case for 11,880 yen, 81 US. Each comes with some fancy golden decoration and is slated for a December release. And on the same day, we also got these very eye-catching t-shirts with SD Gunnam designs on them made by Studio uh, 696. They go for 3,850 and a pop, 26 US, and feature the Gonin Shu or the Mask Commander and are slated for a September release. Which is also when the kid-sized versions of these RX-782 and Char Zaku 2 t-shirts will be releasing for 3,630 yen or 25 US. Or two days later, for 4,620 yen, 32 US, you could get a simple t-shirt with a logo embroidered on it. The available ones are white with a Federation logo, khaki with a Xeon logo, red with a Char logo, black with Omro logo, or black with Mafti logo. All of which are slated for an August release. And then finally for Bankura then, on the 18th, pre-orders went live for the next Dialogue Acrylic Stand. Char, right before he's about to headshot Cassilia. It goes for 1,782 yen, 12 US, and is slated for an October release. And then last, but definitely not least, Gundam has a collaboration with Nishijin Textile for a set of kimono based on the original Gundam series. For women, the design is based on the famous scene of the white base departing Jobro with butterflies flying all around it. And it'll set you back a whopping 412,500 yen, which is 2,829 US. While for men, the design is based on the last shooting and only, only costs you uh, 275,000 yen, which is 1,889 US. However, if you want to wear this kimono for only a fraction of the price, um, they are also available for rent from the Nishijin Textile Center in Kyoto. 
or at least they should be according to Gundam.info. Um, I will have both of the links down below, the article on Gundam.info and the official website of the Nishizen Textile Center, but I couldn't immediately, at least when I looked, I couldn't find the Gundam kimono on the Nishijin, Nishijin website. Maybe by now they are already at it. And finally, let's quickly wrap things up with the polls. A few weeks ago, Gundam.info wanted to know which Gundam character would make the most effective use of resources. And this was in the context of their recycling efforts. So this was definitely something that resulted in some interesting results. While I can agree with most of the rankings, I would have expected some characters to either get more or less votes. Kelly from 0083 came in last place with only 11.7%, but I think that's actually still a pretty generous amount of votes because, I mean, I don't really remember Kelly as being a recycling guy. Yes, he lived on a junkyard, but that was mostly because it was the best way to lay low, while he could also tinker with his mobile armor and modify it to become pilotable with only one arm. In third place then we have Garrett, who got significantly more votes with 21%, but again, in the context of recycling, I think that is a pretty generous amount. Because yes, Garrett definitely has a way with um, using the resources he has at hand, but more in a kind of assess the situation and then use the stuff that he has the best way he can and not really like recycling as in turning them into something else, which from the same series, Kid would have been the man for. And that way of recycling, of course, continues with our two top dogs. Logil with 27.2%, who was my pig because man, does this guy have a way with junk and turning it into something really cool, which again is like the spirit of the question they're asking here. And then in first place, with a whopping 40.1%, we have Judo, who of course literally grew up on a junkyard with um, recycling things being the way he made a living. So he definitely deserved to win, but personally I would have expected Low to get a bit closer to him. But that has been all for this catch-up Gundam news. Uh, like I said in the beginning, everything will be going back on schedule now. So as always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters, I hope everyone watching has a great evening, and I'll see you all later this week with another Gundam news.